from the Glen Campbell Museum in downtown Nashville. It's our host, Keith Burns, with the stories behind the songs. I wrote that book. I read it. Yeah. I didn't know you wrote it. I did. You yeah. wrote the book. I did. I wrote the book. Well, let's so. dive into that then. Yeah. Let's go into that. Yeah. Unbelievable. I'm sitting here going, you know what? In fact, at the time, I was rolling down the road with Trick Pony, and we're on a bus, and I'm re- and 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 Heidi walks on, and 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 she hands me this book. She goes, "You need to write a song that big." And I went, "Yeah, I get it." it mm-hmm. You know, to, and I and I said to them, I said, I told the whole band we're sitting there. I'm reading this book, and I go, "You know what, guys? For all you songwriters out there, this is the level of song you want to write." That the artist that that they'll write a book about your the song that was written, and it just so happens that here's what I love about this show: it's such a small town, and there's so mm-hmm. it, I mean, our you and I have touched each other in, oh, way, yeah. in, in so many different ways that we didn't even know about yeah, exactly, until we started yeah. talking right here. Right. You wrote this song with a guy that has worked with us and written with us, and D. Mm-hmm. Vincent Williams. Right. And in, in the very first time I heard this song, and it just, I just went, that, that's, that's number one, the melody and, and, and the words mixed with the melody. It was like instant song of the year, well, right? You know, you, it, was, uh, it was so funny looking back at this song because D had just went through a divorce and his wife and had left and moved back to Connecticut and uh, to the kids. And he showed up at my office because it's before cell phones. And uh, he's, we had met, but he didn't want to cancel the date. And so he came in and he, he looked like hell. And uh, yeah. I was like, dude, what's wrong? And he's like, man, my wife left me. I hadn't had no sleep. Uh, he said, I just didn't want to, like, no show you. Uh, but don't think i'm gonna be any good and i'd had that uh first verse to moving on for probably a year and didn't know where to go with it and so d sits down and and he starts playing that dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and uh all of a sudden i started singing that verse and 15 minutes later we had that song and uh you're kidding yeah me and him both are like both crying like babies. Like money. Yeah, well, <laughs> no, but you know what's funny? I, I turned that song in, and my publisher uh, wanted us to change the uh, second verse, and I'd been in town for about five years, and, and he was a hit songwriter as well, and so every time he told me to change something, I always changed it. But for whatever reason that time, I was like, no, I'm not changing yeah. anything because it was so heartfelt. And... um Anyway, my song plugger, we just had a work tape. We didn't even demo the song. Right. Uh, because they didn't want to demo something slow. It was a waltz. So uh, Paul uh, Compton was his name. He went into this meeting with Mark Bright, which is Rascal Flatts' producer. And uh, anyway, uh, Mark Bright said, you can play me anything, don't play me a ballad. Well, he played him that work tape. Yeah. And Mark said, well, they can love it now or love it later. They're, we're going to cut it. And he did. He turned it into the label. And in the label, uh, they put out uh, Everyday Love. And uh, they put out two singles. They both went to number one. Mm-hmm. But they hadn't really sold any albums. And right. uh, so they were looking for a third single. And Jerry House played it uh, one morning on his radio station without it being a single. And the phones lit up. Right. And uh, that next week, they went from selling like 500 units here in Nashville to uh, like 15,000 yeah. units. And uh, so that's how it became the single. Yeah, it was definitely a, a career changer for So them. it was like the first yeah. time in my career that the song kind of, you know, fought the fight and right. the, the fans got to have a say so and what the single was going to be. And, but all that came from Devin O'Day and Jerry House playing that record that morning. Right. And uh, the phones lit up, and they played it like eight times in a row. That's just crazy. You wrote this song 
in that but but the prep for for you like I said you had it for it just you just know had what? to land it was in funny the right hands. I think we were writing two different songs. And it's really one of the only times in my Karate career I didn't think about it. You know, he felt like hell, he looked like hell. And he would say something and they say something else, but I think because we didn't overthink it, it's vague enough where everybody can put their own story to that song. So, that you, so you wrote, you came to the table with the first verse, mm-hmm. pretty much written one, right? Because see, here's the thing about this song, and this is this is you know, and, and I've I haven't met you. I've probably met you a hundred times right. in different parties, right? But, but not, not really till tonight, right? When I hear the first line of this song, you got me hooked. Yeah, it's just from the very opening line of the song, right? And that little melody that goes cross yeah. with it. So you know what. God works in mysterious ways, yeah, you know, and a song lands where it's supposed to land. Absolutely, so. and it, it's funny because uh, and this was song. I mean, I'm looking at ACM Song of the yeah, Year. Yeah. What year was that? 2002. 2002. You know what? I think you won the same year. No, you won that. That won the year after because because Rascal Flatts mm-hmm. won the New Artist of the Year. Right. 2000. 2001. They yeah. gave it to us or 2000. Right. Yeah. That's right. That's so awesome. Yeah. That's so cool. Well, can you play it? Yeah, absolutely. Man, y'all are in for a treat out there. I've dealt with my ghosts and I faced all my demons. Finally content with the past I regret I found you find strength in your moments of weakness For once I'm at peace with myself I've been burdened with blame Trapped in the past for too long I'm moved I've lived in this place and I know all the faces. Each one is different, but they're all the same. They mean me no harm, but it's time that I face it. They'll never allow me to change. But I never dreamed home would end up where I don't belong. I can see life has been patiently waiting for me and I know that there's no guarantees but I'm not alone there comes a time in everyone's life when all you can see are the years passing by and I have made up my mind that those days are gone Well I sold what I could and packed what I could Stopped to fill up on my way out of town I love like I should just live like I should I had to lose everything to find out Maybe forgiveness will find me somewhere down this road I'm moving on I'm moving on Oh, that's so good Thank you. That is so good. I will go find whoever said to change that second verse, <laughs> and I will whip their ass <laughs> right where they stand. You, well, I, If you're watching, whoever suggested to change that second, that is yeah. brilliant. Well, you know, it's funny because I'm thankful for that now. And and he was doing his job. You know, songs like that wasn't 
being played on the radio at that time. I, so he's looking at that. But I think I tell all the young writers when, you know, I, I talk to young kids, I'm like, there's got to be some point in your career where you're confident enough in what you do. Exactly. That you make the calls. Yeah, that's true. And, uh, and that's a tough place to get to in this town full of great writers and great things. But there comes a point where you've got to make your artistry yours. Well, especially in that situation, you know, we were defense that had had some success. You were five mm-hmm. years here. You'd had yeah. some cuts. It's yeah. not like you weren't getting, getting right. songs cut. But, you know, folks, we're, we're here at the Rhinestone stage, Glenn Campbell Museum, the gym of Lower Broad. We're here with Philip White, and, and, and this has just been so far above and beyond my expectations. I mean, I just love those songs. I love where you're at, and uh, I love the way – your work ethic, what you do, the way you you come at it. Uh, we had Anthony Smith uh, on a, on an, an, another a previous episode, yeah. and uh, you know Anthony's just the polar opposite of what you and I. You and I write a lot, mm-hmm. like you said, five thousand. I don't have five thousand yeah. songs, but I've got quite a few. Right. Anthony's one of those guys. He said, "Man, I might have written five hundred, but I." I he goes, he, he goes, my publishing right. company hates me. He goes, because right. I'm so slow. He goes, but I just try to, yeah. you know. Everybody, Bob and Dill was like that. Yeah. He wrote Carrie Amanda, Kurt, but he'd Carrie write Kurt one Phillips. song a week. Yeah, Kerry Kirk uh, Phillips is like that. He would, and I've kind of slowed down, too, myself, yeah. you know. But I, come, when I came here, I'd write a 10, 2, and 6, and uh, sometimes all night. Yeah. But uh, It's according to how good the idea yeah. if you're rolling. Well, man, I'm, I tell you what, real. I, I just want to say this again. I'm excited to get in. In fact, as soon as I'm done with this Las Vegas action packed on the edge of your seat, exciting extravaganza of epic proportions unparalleled in the United States of America, muscle shoals induced show, I am going to go download your your CD. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm excited about I'm it. I am going to download it. You got a, you, get, you got that soul about you that, that only somebody that's from that muscle shoals area can have. Well, do you, you agree with that? It's I'm, totally. There's something in the water down it there. It is. It is. And, uh, well, Alabama, for instance. How far are you, you from Anniston? I'm maybe an hour. Yeah. from Anniston. Yeah. And and that's Fort Payne, all that area. Oh yeah. And so, Alabama's my obviously it's my favorite oh, group. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, and and you know Randy and those guys. Sweethearts. Did you ever get anything cut by Alabama? No. You know, it's funny because uh, Randy asked me to play the benefit for St. Jude's at the Peabody Hotel with him years ago, and he got me involved in St. Jude's, and I, I love that, and I played his benefits for the girls' ranch. But, no, you know, I think I came close a couple of times. Right. Uh, but, man, it was how, hard to get an Alabama cup. Uh, well, how big a thrill would it have been for you to get? It would have been huge. And, you know, even now, if yeah. Randy were to go in and go, yeah. I'm gonna cut one of your songs, absolutely. Philip. You'd be as you'd be like be a tipping. kid. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, we're here, and, and uh, like I said, with Philip White, and you know, we're gonna do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little plug here. We're gonna have we're gonna have you back. We do obviously. This is stories yeah. behind the songs. I'm Keith Burns here with stories behind the songs with Philip White. We're gonna have you back on the Southern Night Show that we'll we do here that. at Glen Campbell with KJ here and Helen. Uh, they run the place, and uh, man, is this place not spectacular? It is spectacular. Isn't Absolutely. this nice? Seeing all this uh, history now, right here. Were you a uh, Were you a Glenn Campbell fan? You know what? I was. Yeah, I was a uh, you know uh, gentle on my mind, or in uh, which which tall I'm in, and by Did, the time I get to Phoenix, oh, well, yeah, and, and that's all Jimmy Webb yeah, stuff, you know. Yeah, Jimmy Webb was in, spectacular. Insane, yeah. Well, you know, I was telling you earlier, they've got the lyrics for all you folks that can't see. Right over here, right behind my left shoulder, they've got the lyrics to Wichita Lyman. And it do- the original handwritten Jimmy Webb lyrics, it didn't start out as I am a lineman for the county. It was, a, it was I, I, you know what? I'm going to make you come here to read it to find out on your own. So you got to come to the Glen Campbell Museum and, and read it on your own. I uh, want to say a quick shout-out to Sam and Logan again, our camera crew. Thank you very much, our producer, Raymond. And uh, 